I love puzzles. And my game plan is normally always the same. Step one, dig through the box to get all of the edge pieces. Step two, lay out the entire edge of the puzzle. Step three, realize that your best friend bought you the most complicated, hard to navigate puzzle ever. I mean, water lilies by Monet? You've got to be kidding me. Step four, struggle for hours, sometimes days, to try to navigate which shade of blue goes together and why all the greens kind of look the same, even though they're obviously not. And then finally, step five, put everything back in the box and give up. Now, imagine this process, but the puzzle pieces change. And maybe you know that they've changed, but maybe you don't. Yeah, welcome to the world of IoT, my friends. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Maybe you've started the world's best IoT design, only to get mired in network mapping, security management, manufacturing scalability, and maybe you're stuck there right now. It's okay. I understand. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Andy Reeder from Digi International is bringing a whole box of IoT tools with him. We investigate how Digi's wide range of development, deployment, manufacturing, and management tools can help you put the pieces of your next IoT puzzle together without ditching it and starting over yet again. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Digi International's Tools for Wireless IoT Product Development. Hi, Andy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Amelia. I appreciate it. Excited to be here today. Okay, so Andy, we are here today to talk about building our IoT toolbox. So let's start from the beginning. Why is it important to have tools in our IoT product development? It's important to have tools for a number of reasons, but the big one is that making an IoT product is really difficult. And so if you have tools, it can simplify all of the different processes to get your product to market. And so you want to make sure that there are robust tools so that you don't get into any sort of gotchas along the way. It just streamlines the process for you to get your product launched. In my perspective, one of the coolest tools that almost everyone has is a Swiss Army knife. I started kind of geeking out a little bit and found that the Swiss Army knife was invented in 1880 by a Swiss cutlery manufacturer. And uh, the Swiss Army commissioned his project to build these things. And it had three main functions. It had a can opener, it had a knife, and it had a screwdriver head. And the screwdriver head was really useful for the rifles that the Swiss Army used at the time, so they disassembled them. Really kind of a cool feature, but it's important to be thinking of the same sort of concept when it comes to picking vendors for any sort of products that you're designing into your IoT product. You need to pick a vendor that has a lot of tools in their toolbox to make integrating their product into your product seamless and easy. And so the question goes is, why do you need these tools? Well, um, I kind of mentioned it already, but uh, developing an IoT solution is extremely difficult. The recent study from Cisco found that 60% of companies substantially underestimate the complexity of building an IoT service. So what are companies underestimating? So there's a lot of things that they can underestimate. One thing is the security of the actual product itself. It seems like not a day goes by when you don't hear of a major security breach in IoT. They underestimate the development costs that it actually costs to get up to speed on these products. I mean, they're so diverse that there's a lot of engineering that goes into the products and it takes a lot of time to get up to speed. They have scaling challenges, management cost of the actual fleet, uh, and specifically making more efficient management so you can prevent truck rolls in the future. And then ultimately, too, when you think about adding wireless into these products, keeping the monthly expenses for cellular service down is also something that companies substantially underestimate. Because it's pretty easy when you think about it to throw together a project with an Arduino or Raspberry Pi, but those aren't really scalable solutions. And so you really need to be thinking about that when you're selecting an IoT partner. It really goes to show because additionally, Cisco found that 75% of self-initiated IoT products were considered a failure, which I think is just mind-boggling. 75% of those projects are a failure. 75%? Yikes! I kind of liken it to an interesting physics plot that I found in school. And it's talking about when you're trying to push some static object and trying to push it forward on the ground and you have to push against the frictional force. 
This is really analogous to uh, developing an IoT product, but initially you have to exert tons and tons of force. That's in the static friction area. You have to almost exert more force to get the object in motion before you can get the object in motion. But then once it's in motion, you can exert less force. And this is very similar for creating an, an IoT project. It takes a lot up front to get the product launched. But ultimately, once you get it in motion, it's going places. But that doesn't mean that it becomes really easy to manage an IoT product after you get it in motion or getting that project in motion. But it isn't as challenging as it to get it released and get it to market. So what development tools are important for me to look for in IoT partners? You know, development tools really kind of serve one high-level purpose, and that is reducing the development time so you can get to a proof of concept faster. So any engineering team knows that they're always under the gun to get a product to proof of concept to show to management to say, hey, we can go forward with this. So when you're evaluating vendors for IoT products, you want to kind of look at a few different things. One is looking at all the hardware tools, the software tools, and for any IoT product that's um, looking for different wireless network solutions, uh, you need to look at the network tools to evaluate the invisible wireless strength. So the first thing is really looking at the hardware tools. You want to make sure that any sort of partner has development boards that have multiple components that really allow you to evaluate the vendor's technology. Then going on to software tools, software tools are really important to help you reduce the time it takes to develop and code on any sort of programmable modules. When you think about it, most of the code today that's written is kind of uh, piecemeal put together and massaged in, into a way that fits the end solution. So you want to find vendors or partners that have a lot of software libraries, examples, and documentation so you don't have to go out there and really start from scratch when it comes to coding. Specifically, a great resource is whenever a vendor has an IDE, an integrated development environment, so it can easily upload code instead of having to have multiple different sort of windows to really draft that code. And then finally, if you're looking to add any sort of wireless to your product, network tools are really important to really map the unseen. So when you think about the electromagnetic waves that wireless is communicating over, it's not like you can see it like a wave in the ocean or something like that. So you need to have technologies that allow you to map the network so you can maybe show where different nodes are. And then on top of that, it'd be like showing the range between those nodes and like the network strength between the nodes. Other things that are important is throughput testing, knowing how much data you're going to be sending over those nodes and making sure that when you're testing in the lab, when an engineer is working on it, you can actually send the right amount of data. On top of that, thinking about a spectrum analyzer to be able to see how much noise is in a certain environment to make sure that the noise isn't going to basically drown out any sort of wireless communications that you would have. And then finally, you want to have a firmware update and documentation library so you can know all of the changes that have been made on an actual module itself to make sure that it's in the right place. And the other thing I wanted to talk about on this slide is the GIF on the side. It is really sweet. It's the coolest toolbox ever. And this is kind of what you want to see for your development toolbox. The toolbox is this oil barrel that has all of the tools in it. And that's what you want to look for in the vendor. They want to have every single tool at your fingertips in one solution. You don't want to have to look all with different vendors for just different piecemeal tools. You want to look for vendors that really have all of the tools because it makes your time to market shorter, which ultimately means that you can get a leg up on your competitors and have more market share. So it's really important to pick a good partner that has good, robust development tools. All right, Andy, your name tag says Digi. So can you tell me about what tools Digi has specifically? Digi does a lot of the great things here. I mean, one of our big missions here at Digi is to be a partner with anyone developing an IoT product. And the real big push recently is thinking about how we can make whatever stakeholder at our customers' company's life easier. Specifically in the development stage of and developing a proof of concept, we've got some great development boards. We just released a new XBIB-C development board, which is completely revamped, has a lot of great functionalities on it. A couple of those are the current monitoring pins to be able to test battery life. We have onboard I2C sensor to test and evaluate how sensors would work with the next DigiXP module. We have a Grove connector. We've got header breakouts, a GPS breakout that you can add to test location service. A lot of good stuff on the hardware side. Our strength even gets stronger when you move into our DigiXCTU or the XP configuration and test utility tool. 
So it's a software tool to do all of that range evaluation that we we're talking about. You can do range testing between modules. You can see all the different firmwares. You can have a spectrum analyzer to, to see what noise the solution has. And then ultimately, there's a throughput functionality as well to be able to see how much data you can push. So the XETU is just a fantastic Swiss Army knife. It's one of our most uh, downloaded tools, and it's a fantastic tool to put in your toolbox if you're an engineer trying to develop an IoT product. And additionally, on top of that, we have the DigiXP MicroPython PyCharm plugin. And so this is a plugin that goes into PyCharm's IDE suite, but it makes adding coding on the edge, coding in MicroPython on our XP module is significantly easier because we have all these libraries examples that you can just click on it, sucks them in, you can kind of slice and dice them any way you want to for your end solution. And voila, you've got a wireless application that's up and running in significantly less time than it would be to have to fumble through a lot of documentation to figure things out. And then on top of that, we just added a, a mobile SDK. This is also pertinent for when you're deploying a network. SDK stands for a standard development kit. And what it is is a bunch of libraries, examples, and documentation. So you can develop a custom mobile app, maybe on an iPhone, maybe on an Android device, uh, iPad, all sorts of mobile devices that allows you to connect with an XP module for Bluetooth. Here at Digi, we think that's a fantastic value proposition for when you're setting up a network and you've got someone out in the field, they need to maybe check and see certain settings on the module or make sure that the signal strength between modules is really important. You can develop a custom app for your company and you don't have to figure out all the complex algorithms and encryption that Bluetooth requires in the background. We've got great examples to do it. So a lot of these tools really just arm you with a great set of knowledge and give you the ability to develop that proof of concept as fast as possible. So if I've developed a proof of concept and now I need to manufacture and scale it appropriately, what do I need to consider now? Manufacturing is a whole different challenge and something that I think people don't necessarily think about to the fullest extent. You know, you've created a product that you're going to go to market with. Now you need to source all the components that need to be programmed with certain firmware or software. So what are you going to do? You know, you want to do it efficiently, but how do you do it efficiently? One challenge that we've seen is when we partner with our distributors and a customer orders parts through the distributor, sometimes some of the modules have been sitting on the shelf, so they don't all have the same firmware. They don't have all the right custom settings that a customer may want for their special deployment. So you don't want to be inefficient and program them one by one. So you want to find a partner that has the ability to batch update these right when you're assembling and manufacturing your final product. That's really what it comes down to for manufacturing. So you want to be able to program all those modules and update the firmware in a large fleet instead of one by one. On top of that, you also want the ability to keep kind of a log of all the changes that are happening to make sure that all of the modules have been updated to the right specs so they don't go out in the field and you have to completely bring them on back because, oh crap, someone forgot to actually update it the right way. So it's really important to have solid manufacturing tools. And one way that Digi does a fantastic job of this is with our Digi multi-programmer. And uh, we've got a good plug here for Mauser is that uh, Mauser adds a value added reservice where they will actually help program bulk batches of modules before they are shipped to an end customer, which is fantastic. But the Digi multi-programmer is a simple and fast automated way to program XP modules. You can program up to six modules. If you plug in two of these devices, you can go up to 12, maybe go to 24. You can do as many as you can kind of keep up with. But it's a fantastic tool. It's got a software program where operators don't have to have tons of knowledge of kind of all of the specific settings and all of the coding. I and mean, they can use that software to really graphically see when a module has successfully been coded and they can take it out and then plug a new one in. And this just streamlines the process so much faster. I mean, it's six times or as many of these as you want to connect. So it's a fantastic tool for scaling. And then on top of it, it gives you the ability to export programming session data. So you can see if firmware uploads have been a success and you can have detailed logs to put in your own corporate database. So really great feature for something that's commonly overlooked. Okay, so after manufacturing is done, what do I need to think about when I'm ready to put things out into the field? Deployment is such a critical part in the process of an IoT product. And really what you're doing during deployment is you're creating a solid basis to prevent future truck rolls, and uh, you want to implement an organized IoT structure. So when, when I say uh, minimizing truck rolls, looking around, I found that usually a truck roll will cost between $150 to $500. And even some reports have shown that it's each truck roll costs about $1,000 per truck roll. And when you think about it, that can really add up for a really large network that you have deployed. And so you really want to deploy a network that's robust, really organized, so you can do things efficiently, reduce the amount of truck rolls you have, and set up the network in a robust way. 
But on top of that, even before you're deploying things, uh, your team should be looking to install networks and have it done in an easy way for the technicians who are actually doing the installation of your IoT solution. And so there are a few things that will pay dividends in the long run. One of it is mapping the network for future debugging. So it's important that you know where each wireless node would be or where each IoT product would be so that when you service them later, you can actually find the right one instead of having an unorganized mess where it's trying to, oh, this one over here, nope, it's not this one. What about this one? Nope, it's not that one. So you want to make sure that you've got a robust, organized map of the system. And then on top of that, you want to have that map showing you the signal strength between the modules. So a technician out in the field can say, okay, I'm seeing that this one isn't talking to this one. Maybe we need to have a node in between it so that it can create the proper hops so that the data actually will get to the endpoint. Because if there isn't good signal strength between it, you could be jeopardizing the strength of your network. So you want to have a tool where a deployment technician can see what the signal strength is between nodes. And on top of that, you want to be able to make custom applications for your deployment technicians to make it easy. The best user experience for anyone is a good, simple user experience. I think that's pretty common sense. One thing at Digi, we think, you know, custom mobile app is just a fantastic fixture because everyone has some sort of mobile device and a deployment technician can use that out in the field to easily just say, all right, this module has good signal strength. It has the right firmware. We've placed it in the right spot. We've put it on the right spot on the map. We've done our job. Move on to the next module. It's just a fantastic way to assure that your network is deployed properly. Then on top of that, there are going to be snafus when you're deploying. So you want to have some sort of way to, when you're out on the site, change firmware, update the firmware, or do any sort of configuration changes. And so looking for tools and a partner that is able to offer that is, I think, critical to a successful deployment. And a successful deployment starts when you're developing how you're going to deploy it, when you're creating the plans to deploy it. It continues through the actual deployment, and then it pays dividends later on, preventing that truck roll and the expenses to be really racked up. And so I think Digi does a fantastic job here. It's certainly a forward-looking perspective. We've offered a couple of products. One is our Digi XP network assistance software, and you pair it with uh, the XP3 USB adapter that's pictured here in this slide. And what a technician can do is plug that USB adapter into their laptop, and then using the software program that's network assistant, they can easily map all the modules. They can bring in a map, whether it's an image that they inputted or something from Google Maps. And then they can drag all the modules that are connected in this network in an organized fashion, maybe rename them so you can come find them if there's a problem child somewhere in the future that you need to fix to. And the really cool thing, you can see it in the image is there creates a sort of mesh topology. And you can kind of see the spider web on the screen here. And when there's good connections, you can change the color so it indicates there's a good strong signal between here. So like I was talking before, if the technician is not seeing a good signal between two different nodes, they can add another node in between to make sure you have a solid, robust network that's communicating. So it's a fantastic software solution that Digi provides. We've already previously talked about our Digi Mobile SDK, but this is a great tool for any company that's forward thinking, for any technicians who are going to be setting up the modules with their mobile devices. And the mobile SDK is just a way so that you can have your own internal team develop a custom app to make deployment simple and it ensures a robust, streamlined deployment. That again, will pay dividends in the future where you don't have to be sending people out for truck rolls. And then finally, for all those on site quick fixes that you need to do with an XP network, we have a mobile app that can be downloaded on Google Play or on the iTunes App Store. It allows you to update firmware and make any sort of changes on the fly that might be necessary if you have to pivot really fast. All right. So what about remote management? Remote management is the ultimate key to keeping your network up and running. And I said this a lot of times before, and I'll say it again, is any sort of IoT network or IoT product, it's a living and breathing creature. It's not something you ship in the field and you don't have to ever think about ever again. It's something that needs to be managed, taken care of to ensure that it's secure, robust, and is doing what you need it to do. So having some sort of remote management platform is absolutely key for your deployment. A study found that 84% of organizations that have adopted the Internet of Things have experienced some sort of IoT-related data breach. And so finding ways to make sure that your network is secure is really important. Sometimes the easiest way to keep your network secure is doing the simple things right. So you need to find tamper-proof systems, systems that provide over-the-air firmware updates to patch certain security vulnerabilities that you might have. So you don't actually have to go update module by module. You want to find a remote management platform that can go out in the field and do that. On top of that, you want to look for a management platform that can help you organize all the nodes, all the different types of IoT, maybe sub-segments of products that you have organized somewhere in the field. 
This is important because sometimes you have an IoT deployment in certain geographies that you want updated differently. You need to make sure that they have it organized. Or if you want to see how different deployments are behaving for some reason, you want to be able to separate them and be able to see different results. And so being able to organize all of those nodes is a really handy tool for any deployment. On top of that, you want to have a remote management structure that makes it easy to connect with whoever your cloud partner is, whether it's Azure, AWS, the list will go on there. The next thing is uh, something that I think is commonly overlooked, but really important because it directly goes to the bottom line is how much wireless data or cellular data are you using with your IoT deployment? So you want to make sure that you have some sort of remote management platform that's thinking about these things, making this, this sort of assessment because you don't want to really rack up those bills. Additionally, you want to add device health metrics and reports. You want to be able to get a quick report. Sometimes you don't want to have to bury yourself and get in the weeds of all of these modules and look individually one by one. How is the health doing? So you want to either use alarms or some sort of report to tell you from a high level, hey, your network's doing great, have a fantastic day. Or if something's doing wrong, you'll have an alarm that'll trip and and point you to a certain area. So you want all these things in a a remote management platform because it ultimately will save you time and energy over the lifespan of your deployed IoT solution. And where I think we do a great job, again, I'm a little biased here, but I think Digi Remote Manager does a a fantastic job for those secure firmware updates, as well as all the tamper-proof systems. Uh, Digi Remote Manager helps you organize all the network modes. You can easily drag and change the organizational substructure, which I think is fantastic. Uh, We easily integrate with any of cloud partners. But when I really start to see us doing really cool things is thinking about how much our customer is spending. We've got fantastic tools to make sure that you keep that data rate expense down. And it's really just fantastic thinking that, again, directly affects the bottom line. DRM also provides device health metrics and reports and alarms, and it's very customizable. So you can set alarms for maybe you have a IoT product that's measuring water tank levels and something's either good or bad. You can set an alarm to let you know about that. So the beauty of Remote Manager is that this can be just for one device or it can scale to a million devices. It can be right next to you and your deployment right outside of your office or across the globe. So after talking about all of this, what do these tools really get me in the end? Well, I mean, it's really important. And, you know, what it all kind of boils down to is if you have a good tool set, it'll reduce the amount of effort it takes to release a product and reduce the time it takes to market. So I'm going to take this full circle and go back and talk about the friction curve. Imagine your IoT solution, you're pushing it against the ground, you're exerting yourself. All of a sudden you launch it and it gets easier. That's fantastic. But if you don't have to do the same sort of amount of work, it's going to ultimately save you time and and get you to market faster. And that's what you can do with uh, all the tools, specifically the DigiXP tools can really help you when you're deploying your product, get a proof of concept faster. When you're manufacturing your product, scale it faster, deploy it more efficiently so you don't have truck rolls and then ultimately manage it until you're going to retire your IoT solution. So it's really fantastic, holistic tools portfolio that can uh, reduce Reduce your effort and get your product to market faster. Andy, this was super cool. Where should I go next? So ultimately, you should go check out some of our tools. Uh, They're not expensive, but they're fantastic for evaluation. Check out our development tools. See some of our development kits, our new XPIV-C development board. Go check out our manufacturing tools. Check out the value-added service that Mauser provides to program modules. Check out our deployment tools so that now you can think about how you're going to deploy your IoT solution. Don't let that become a afterthought. And then finally, come check out Digi Remote Manager. We have developer accounts that are fantastic ways just to get a taste of the software and ultimately provide better management for your tools. Very cool. I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Andy. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for having me. I hope it was really helpful and uh, love to help out any more if anyone else has any questions. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Digi's Tools for Wireless IoT Product Development. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. 